Ever find yourself fascinated by the allure of rebellion or wonder about the tales behind those riding in leather jackets? The Hells Angels aren't just a motorcycle club. They're an emblem of a culture that defies the norm. Whether it's intrigue or concern that brings you here, you're about to peel back the layers of myth to uncover the raw, untold history of this notorious group. So kickstart your curiosity and let's dive into the real story behind the Hells Angels. Stay with us as we throttle through history and decode the legacy of these two-wheeled legends. Before we begin, hit that like and subscribe button or else you might just find a Harley parked in your living room, courtesy of the Hells Angels. In the rolling foothills of San Bernardino, the year is 1948. Here on the sun-baked streets of Fontana, California, a brotherhood is forming. A brotherhood of men bonded by the road, by the roar of their engines, and by a recent return to civilian life. These men are the nascent members of what will become the most infamous motorcycle club in the world, the Hells Angels. The post-World War II era is a time of great change and adjustment. As soldiers return home, many of them find solace and freedom on two wheels, roaring down highways and forging new paths. Among these men are the founding members of the Hells Angels, veterans seeking camaraderie and a shared sense of purpose that had been ingrained in them during their time of service. It's a time without the luxury of social media or the internet. These motorcycle enthusiasts find each other through word of mouth and a shared passion for the Harley-Davidsons, Indians, and other bikes that symbolize a very American brand of liberty. These aren't just machines. They represent a departure from the structured, often difficult life many faced while in military service. On the back of a bike with the wind in their face, they find a freedom unattainable anywhere else. The true roots of the Hells Angels can be traced to several motorcycle clubs formed by World War II veterans in California. Names like the pissed-off bastards of Bloomington and the Market Street Commandos are often mentioned in the same breath as the early genesis of the club we know today. But what set the Hells Angels apart was a certain allure, an intangible, almost outlaw mystique, what's in a name. For the Hells Angels, it's a nod to a moniker first used by military units, including a famous bomber group. But for our founding members, this name signifies something entirely new and unique. It will come to symbolize brotherhood and a certain defiance, a steadfast adherence to their own rules and codes on the fringes of post-war society. As we trace the lines of these early days, we aren't just looking at the birth of a group or a club, we're witnessing the beginning of a legend that will grow and spread across continents. It all starts here, in a place still feeling the aftershocks of war, amongst men trying to rediscover peace on the backs of their iron steeds. And so the journey of the Hells Angels begins, on California's open roads, with a small group of men dedicated to the ride, searching for a place and a purpose in a rapidly changing America. This is where we take our first ride into the history of the Hells Angels, with the throttle open and the horizon wide. The Hells Angels didn't just happen upon their name by chance. It's a moniker steeped in history. The name originates from military squadrons, most notably the Hells Angels of the 303rd Bombardment Group, a decorated B-17 unit from World War II. These veterans took pride in their service, and as they returned to civilian life, they brought with them a sense of unity and an attachment to the name that symbolized their fearlessness and camaraderie. It was in this way that the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club claimed a name that echoed bravery and brotherhood. But it was more than a name that defined the club. It was also the emblem, a skull with wings, known as the Death Head. This emblem would become an iconic symbol of the Hells Angels, and it was no arbitrary design. The death head reflects an acknowledgement of mortality and a defiance of the very notion celebrating the freedom and spirit of the open road. It became a badge of honor, a symbol to be worn only by fully initiated members, reinforcing an exclusive brotherhood amongst those who bore it. As the club carved its identity into the annals of biker culture, so too did it begin to establish its presence beyond San Bernardino. Enter Ralph Sonny Barger, arguably the most notable figure in the club's history. It was under Barger's leadership that the Hells Angels truly began to spread their wings, initially extending their reach across California before soaring to the international stage. It wasn't just about being part of a local group anymore. The Hells Angels were becoming a global phenomenon. The Oakland chapter, established by Barger, quickly became the blueprint for others to follow, and soon enough, new charters were popping up all over the United States and then the world. 
Each chapter maintained the core values and aesthetic of the original club, but also brought its own local traditions into the fold. It was a time of growth, a reflection of the motorcycle's unifying power crossing cultural and national borders. This period of expansion solidified the Hells Angels not just as a motorcycle club, but as a potent cultural force. From California to distant shores, the name Hells Angels became a symbol of a certain way of life, one epitomized by freedom, loyalty, and an unbreakable bond between brothers. The Hells Angels were staking their claim and the world was taking notice. As the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club spread its wings from the back roads of California to the global stage, something curious happened. This brotherhood on bikes, once an obscure subculture, began to capture the imagination of the wider public. Their mystique, their image, and their lifestyle found resonance far beyond the bikers' dens and dive bars. It permeated into the very fabric of popular culture. In the decade of the 1960s, an era marked by counterculture and a profound questioning of traditional values, the Hells Angels stood as symbols of ultimate rebellion. Journalists, authors, and filmmakers captivated by the club's raw allure sought to explore and sometimes exploit the mythos surrounding the angels. They became fixtures in a wave of media that attempted to dissect the essence of freedom and dissent. Hunter S. Thompson's seminal book, Hell's Angels, The Strange and Terrible Saga of the Outlaw Motorcycle Gangs, released in 1966, offered an unprecedented look into the life and lore of the club. Thompson embedded himself with the Angels, presenting a first-hand account that was both gritty and humanizing, highlighting their exploits and experiences. This book would go on to become a classic of gonzo journalism, forever linking Thompson's legacy with that of the infamous motorcycle club he chronicled. The silver screen, too, became a canvas for the Hells Angels image, both factual and fictional. Films like Hells Angels on Wheels, and later on the cult classic Easy Rider, although not directly about the Hells Angels, drew clear inspiration from the biker lifestyle and its embodiment of freedom on the open road. Such films painted a romantic, if at times dramatized, picture of life on the motorcycle, of the men who rode and the society they inhabited. But this media portrayal was a double-edged sword. It brought infamy, along with fascination, casting the Hell's Angels as the anti-heroes of a rebellious youth culture, yet also as emblematic of the fears and anxieties related to the breakdown of social norms. The public's eyes were fixated on the bikers' every move, from dust-raising rides to headline-grabbing skirmishes with the law. The Angels, aware of their burgeoning notoriety, didn't simply ride passively into the spotlight. They shaped their own narrative. From making public appearances to merchandising their logo, they took ownership of their image, controlling and commoditizing the outlaw aesthetic that so many found intriguing. Such was their cultural impact that to this day, mention of the Hell's Angels conjures an immediate vivid image, one created from a patchwork of stories, images, and legends that have stitched themselves into the world's collective consciousness. The ripple effect of their existence has touched everything from fashion to literature, and their image, once an insular badge of honor has become a global icon of rebellion and freedom. With the rise of the Hells Angels in the public eye, a not-so-glamorous side of the club also burst into view. The freedom and rebellion that so captured the imagination of the public brought with it a shadow of controversy, legal entanglements, and accusations of organized crime. Law enforcement agencies, both national and international, began to take notice of the Hells Angels, as reports of illicit activities surfaced, allegations of involvement in drug trafficking, weapons smuggling, and violent crime became perennial headlines. These stories served to enhance the outlaw narrative, not just in myth, but through tangible, publicized legal battles. One infamous incident that would mark the club's history was the Altamont Speedway Free Concert in 1969. What was intended as the West Coast's answer to Woodstock, a free concert featuring the Rolling Stones, turned dark when the Hells Angels, purportedly hired for security, were embroiled in violence that resulted in the death of a young concertgoer. The incident was etched into the public memory, a grim reminder of the volatility associated with the Angels' presence. The years that followed saw a series of raids and arrests targeting Hells Angels members, sometimes resulting in convictions. From operations like Black Rain and Black Biscuit, attempts were made to infiltrate and prosecute members of the club for various alleged criminal activities. The clubhouse doors, 
once open to those seeking the camaraderie of the road, began to close as a defense against a society that viewed them through a lens of suspicion. It wasn't long before the Hells Angels found themselves regularly defending their name and their existence in courtrooms across the world. The legal challenges ranged from criminal defense to trademark disputes as the club fought to protect their identity and logo from unauthorized use. In fact, the club's insignia is a registered trademark, and they've been vigilant about defending the sanctity of their emblem. But the stories and the legal struggles of the Hells Angels did more than create courtroom drama. They sparked a conversation about civil liberties and the boundaries of law in the face of an evolving counterculture. The Hells Angels stood as a litmus test for the tolerance of a society grappling with the darker edges of freedom. Despite the controversies and the legal scrutiny, the mystique of the Hells Angels endures. They remain as much a symbol of the open road as they are of the crossroads between rebellion and the rule of law. Their story continues to unfold, a complex narrative of exploration and transgression etched on the tarmac of America's freeways and the statutes of its courts. Peering beyond the public spectacles and headlines, we find a strictly organized and closely knit community within the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Their internal structure, an intricate hierarchy, and a set of unwritten codes of conduct is as integral to their identity as their motorcycles and leather jackets. Motivated by an ethos that values loyalty and respect, the Hells Angels are organized in charters or chapters, each functioning as an independent entity within the larger framework of the International Club. Atop this structure sits the charter officers, including the President, Vice President, Secretary, Treasurer, and Sergeant-at-Arms, each with a specific role and responsibility to keep the chapter running efficiently. Becoming a member of the Hells Angels is not an overnight affair. It's a laborious process that can take years. Prospects must earn their stripes, proving their dedication to the club's values and their fellow members. This initiation period is a test of character, one designed to weed out those not fully committed to the Hells Angels way. Once initiated, a member is expected to abide by the club's codes and participate in its activities. The motorcycle stands central to these activities. Owning and riding a Harley Davidson is not just a preference, it's a prerequisite. Their bikes are badges of identity reflecting the soul of the club and the freedom it cherishes. But the Hells Angels enterprise expands beyond the realms of biking. They come together for more than just rides. They're known to participate in charity events, including toy drives and fundraising for different causes. These philanthropic gestures showcase another dimension of the club, often overshadowed by a dominant narrative of delinquency and defiance. Despite their fierce defense of personal freedoms, adhering to the club's internal rules is paramount. The Death Head emblem is sacred, a symbol only full-fledged members are entitled to wear proudly on their vests. To don this emblem is to represent the club in full, both its legacy and its tightly woven bonds. With every chapter that rallies, the Hells Angels reassert the values that have bound them since those early days in Fontana. It's in this duality of tightly governed brotherhood and the wild spirit of the open road that the heart of the Hells Angels beats the strongest. Here, inside the club, the road isn't just asphalt and dust. It's an ideal, a code, a shared journey that binds as fiercely as blood. As the world has turned, the chapters of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club have multiplied across the continents, from the smooth highways of California to the far stretches of Europe, Australia, and beyond. The Hells Angels have become a global insignia synonymous with motorcycle culture, their presence recognized in over 50 countries and evoking the same mix of awe and mystery that it did over half a century ago. The undying influence of the Hells Angels is a testament to their capacity for legacy building. Not only through the rumbling presence of their bikes, but also through the mark they've left on the fabric of local communities. From supporting veterans to backing charitable causes, the club has shown that their identity encompasses a capacity for solidarity and goodwill. And yet, as the decades have passed, the Hells Angels' relationship with society's legal structures remains fraught with tension. Perpetual legal battles continue to challenge members and the club's collective ethos. With every court case, whether fighting criminal allegations or protecting their trademark rights, the Hells Angels reaffirm their commitment to living on their own terms, standing firm against what they perceive as attempts to corral their untamed spirit. Their resilience and adaptability have contributed to their enduring image, one that has permeated deeper than the leather and tattoos. It has entered the realm of brand and myth. 
The Death Head still commands respect, representing a history and a culture that has withstood the test of time and continued scrutiny. In the world of motorcycle clubs, the Hell's Angels ride at the forefront, their presence a commanding chapter of modern folklore. They have engineered an immortal presence in global motorcycle culture, one that both celebrates and challenges the conventions of the mainstream. The roaring engines that once signaled the birth of a new kind of brotherhood on the back roads of a post-war world have echoed into the digital era, where the Hell's Angels' reputation, for better or for worse, races on. Whether reviled or revered, the club's journey, paved in asphalt, framed by courtroom doors and written on the wind, rides on into the annals of the 21st century. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the captivating history of the Hell's Angels. We've peeled back the layers of myth and delved into the untold truths of this notorious group. We hope you've enjoyed our exploration and invite you to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more thrilling videos. Until next time, keep the curiosity kick-started and the engines revved.